Devices similar to this one here are currently studied for neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, but also for generalized anxiety disorder. And what they focus on there are actually the lights that you don't see. Every second bulb here seems like it's not on. And that's because it's outside the visible spectrum. So that's near infrared light. The ones you see here actually is just you know red light and that's usually in the 620, 630 nanometer range. Um, that is actually not what's being studied. This is usually marketed for hair growth. But again, the ones that are not seen here, that's 830 nanometers. And you know, that kind of frequency is currently studied for, um, again, f to treat the brain essentially, because near infrared light can penetrate through bone into brain. It's actually very fascinating. I did other videos about this, uh, of the value that we have from near infrared light you know, for the immune system by virtue of increasing melatonin in our cells. And there's a talk from uh, Dr. Schult, Roger Schult, that's called, uh, titled Light as Medicine. And I talked about that one before. He did a fantastic job in really outlining this. It's a very long talk, but I think it's highly informative and I highly encourage people to watch that. I'm gonna link that in my um, notes here. Anyway, the near infrared light is very promising. And as it comes to generalized anxiety disorder, there was a study in uh, 2019 in the uh, Journal of Photobiomodulation photomedicine and laser surgery and the title was transcranial photobiomodulation with near infrared light for generalized anxiety disorder a pilot study so they had 15 subjects with generalized anxiety disorder and they used the device again similar to this one but just with the uh, near infrared light and their wavelength was 830 nanometers they um, had an intensity of 30 milliwatt per square centimeters totaling 2.4 watts. So that's really not a whole lot. Many of these devices like this one here, you can run them with like a battery pack. So it doesn't need a whole lot of power to produce that obviously. Um, they wore this for 20 minutes um, every day. Again, this was over an uh, eight week period. And at the end of this study, you know, they showed a significant reduction in anxiety and a significant improvement in sleep. I talked in other videos about how important it is you know, or that our brain can really influence our immune system. And that's another aspect I think that's very promising with these devices, you know, if we can stimulate uh, the brain in a positive way to really, you know, boost immune function. That's another thing that I think would be very interesting to see. So I think these devices are extremely promising. Now the question of course is what you can buy right now, you know, on, on Amazon or somewhere else, are they any good? And I think the real question is, do they really produce, first of all, the wavelengths and the intensity that they advertise? Because they advertise correctly, they're saying, look, we have whatever, 830, 850 nanometer, or sometimes 910 nanometer near infrared light. You know, also the intensity seems to be okay. The question is, of course, what you're buying, does it really produce that? Then the other question is, the frequency of how often should you do this? Is there a downside to doing this too often? You know, we really need better studies to look at this if, if, if there's any real downside to this. But when we think about near infrared light, we're exposed to this from sunlight. So what we perceive as warmth from the sunlight is the near infrared part. And again, that's the part that we actually cannot see. You know, it's being exposed to sunlight, you know, short of getting a sunburn and maybe, you know, skin cancer if you overdo it, is actually very positive and it has a lot of benefits. And when you look at um, our history, you know, when we look back about 100 years back, we were in the sun a lot more than we are today. We spend a lot less time in the sun. We have a lot less sun exposure. That also means a lot less near infrared light. But to make it worse, we have um, you know, low energy glass. So this glass filters out near infrared light. So there's less coming into our houses. And then our light bulbs now are LED light bulbs and LED lights do not have near infrared. Now the old incandescent uh, light bulbs, the one with that filament inside that lights up, they do produce near infrared light. And you know, I'm actually contemplating in my house to put a few of those back in, you know, especially where we sit in, you know, more in the evening time that we get a bit of near infrared light coming in. But again, that's just something that uh, uh, we can do to get more near infrared light. I think these devices are extremely promising. Um, and again, when we look at stud studies for generalized anxiety disorder, or also studies that are underway for Parkinson's disease, I think this research will be very valuable. One, to see which frequencies or which wavelengths work the best. And then, you know, how often should you do this? Uh, is there a preventive uh, window, which I think most people would be very interested in. If you have a family history, let's say of dementia, you know, at a certain age, would it be valuable to start using these devices in order to, you know, prevent certain, you know, uh, brain problems that we can have later on? And all this, uh, I think all these parameters need to be studied, but then we have a technology, I think that will be fairly accessible. I, I think fairly reasonably priced and could be immensely valuable.